أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقوله الحق وهو أصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله نور السماوات والأرض مثل نوره كمشكات فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب ذري يوكد من شجرة مباركة زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد زيتها يضيء ولو لم تمسسه نار نور على نور يهدي الله لنوره من يشاء ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس والله بكل شيء عليم صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات على محمد وآل محمد <تصفيق> All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I begin in his name bearing allegiance that there is no God but Allah He is one He is independent He does not beget nor is He begotten لم يلد ولم يولد and there is no equal to Him ولم يكن له كفو نحد as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in the Holy Quran الذي ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير There is no equal to him He is all hearing, all seeing وهو السميع البصير All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And everything good that you and I ascribe in this existence Was originated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Meaning all good originates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Evil as we say is that which Allah has forbidden. Anything that has sharr, anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls evil, you know this is something Allah has forbidden. And when Allah forbids something, it is evidence of the existence of free will. Meaning, when Allah says don't do something, it means that Allah has given us free will. If we lacked free will, then why would Allah tell us not to do something? So we will discuss this issue of free will inshallah, because some people wonder how do we have free will when Allah already knows the future. Since Allah knows what choices we will make, how is it that we have free will? We will talk about that, but just as an introduction you will see that anything which Allah has forbidden us is evil. That which He has allowed us or commanded us to do, then it must be good. So all good originates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah out of His infinite mercy as we discussed yesterday and the days before, Allah has endowed us with intelligence, this aql, and given us the ability to choose wrong from right. We have established from the Qur'an that Allah has created us to test us. We have established in our discussions over the past few days that it is through trials an individual is elevated in status. If not for an exam, an individual would never have the ability to elevate himself. A human being needs to be put through a test to elevate himself as well as to expose the status where he is at the moment. So we have established that tests are important, we have established that intelligence exists, we have established generally that all good must be the dominant force for our existence. And logically, since we are under a trial, then we must also establish that you need a teacher to be examined. No school can give an exam to a student until and unless the teacher is there to administer the information and then the examination can be given. Therefore, logically speaking, by the laws of human ethics, we require prophets. It is important for us to have prophets because Allah says in the Quran, never have we punished a community before having sent them a warner and a guide. Every community has received a guide. And if a guide, for argument's sakes, was not in that community, then that community is free from trials. The trial of Allah, Allah can never test such a person, never. This individual, by the way, cannot be judged on the day of judgment and this individual cannot be rewarded 
nor punished on the day of judgment. Because such an individual has not been given a teacher to teach them, so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should test them. Now there are those who refuse these teachers. It doesn't matter. It's your choice to accept these teachers or your choice to submit to them. That is part of the trial. But from wisdom and logic it is required that we must have a teacher to teach us because we already know that we have to make choices. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us who are these teachers.